Welcome to NAV Church Online. We are so excited that this week you've once again joined our conversation in the School of Hard Knocks. My name is David Amston, lead pastor here at the church. We have an amazing team around us that always makes our worship time. Uh, uh, actually, I think it's a beautiful time of worship, and I want to thank that team for every week getting us something to be able to do. Even though we can't be here together in a building, we can still do church together because the church is gathering online right now. So thank you for the worship team. I also want to encourage you out there. These are new times that we're living in, and I believe when you're here in a building and there's music happening, people are standing, you're more likely to engage and sing and be a part of it. This may be weird, but I want to encourage you at your house, stand up. I want to encourage you to turn the volume up just a little bit louder and get used to worshiping at home. And here's why I say that. Your worship should never end. It shouldn't be a one-time event on a Sunday morning when you happen to make it out to a building, um, but that you can get actually used to playing worship music in your house or some type of music that helps you engage with God to either tell Him about who He is or engage in, in some level of praise and worship, giving Him worth. And so I want to thank the team for every week providing something for us to do as a church. And I say a church because it's not a building, it's not a place, it's not a thing, it's a people, and you're that person as being a follower of Jesus Christ. And so we just want to welcome you today. As I, mean, I am so excited. I don't know if you can hear it in my tone and tenor. Um, I'm also, I can feel like I'm leaning in right now and no, it's not because I've been over caffeinated uh, through coffee. It's just because I'm excited about what we're going to be doing today. We have a pastor by the name of Manny Parks. He's out of Page, Arizona. And I'll tell you more about Page later on in my conversation with him and about the world that he lives in, but I can tell you now he is a big church in a small town, but even that, greater than that, in this small town, they're having a huge impact. And so I was talking with uh, Pastor Manny, uh, who's one of our overseers here at the church. One of our apostles would be the term that we would use as oversight to the church to make sure that we are always in the direction and line that we should be going. And I asked him, have you ever been to the School of Hard Knocks before? And he, along with uh, Pastor Philip, who we talked to last week, and Pastor Daryl, who will be a part of our conversation next week, he responded the same way as everyone else. There was a small chuckle and said, which one do you want to know? Because I have some degrees hanging on my wall from the School of Hard Knocks. And I've invited him to be a part of today's conversation to tell us a journey that he went on uh, through a building program, as well as what we learned on that. And, and I'll jump back on at the end of our conversation with Pastor Manny to kind of drive home a few more little nuggets. But for right now, I just want to invite Pastor Manny Parks into the conversation. As I just mentioned, we're going to be joining uh, Pastor Manny Parks from Page, Arizona, Faith Bible Chapel, and here he is with me live, first and foremost. Pastor Manny, thank you for joining us today. I'm really happy to be with you guys. I tell you what, I had such a blast when I got to uh, spend the time with you guys with uh, uh, just a few months ago, really, and um, it, it, just, it was just such a joy. I felt right at home. That was the best part. And, uh, and so it's just a thrill to be with you guys again. Uh, it's an awesome church. So Pastor Manny, for those who don't remember, uh, he actually was a part of the Army for some time uh, as a field artillery surveyor, uh, eventually got his de degree and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Hopefully I have that right with a minor in Correct. psychology with minor in psychology, so I'm not going to try to outsmart him today. He's smarter than I am. Uh, but while at college, he had the call uh, to go into ministry, eventually went to seminary and graduated there in 1991. And then eventually, you're really, you looks like you traveled the nation, being in different churches, till eventually coming back home, if you would. And so how long have you actually been the lead pastor now or senior pastor of Faith Bible out there in Page? Well, this, the end of July will be 24 years. Okay. okay which, which was, um, you know, and I think Brent was just toddling at that time. So, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, though, he, uh, he came on with us, <clears throat> he and Teresa, about two years after that. Okay. We got out there in 96, and, <clears throat> and Brent and Teresa joined us shortly thereafter. 
Wonderful. Well, I know as uh, many of you that are part of Navigation Church, uh, Brent and Teresa are a part of the team here. Um, and I'll tell you now, I, I, just like Pastor Manny's going to say, we got the deal of a lifetime when we partnered up with them. And so just an amazing family. And, and let's just jump into the conversation. I've been a couple weeks now talking about the School of Hard Knocks, a lot of lessons that I've learned and trying to give really the backstory behind it, as well as the life principle that I learned from it. And I've learned over time, every pastor, uh, most people that are at least, you know, cognitively aware of the world around them have some level of a bachelor, master's, or maybe even a doctorate from the school of hard knocks. And so oh, yeah. here's just kind of your first softball question. Uh, have you ever attended the school of hard knocks? And if so, uh, what class did you learn from? What, what degree did you get from it? Well, um, definitely been in the class of hard knocks. I'm not sure if I passed and graduated yet. Because, um, uh, you know, I think the term not head comes from getting all those, you know, hard knocks up beside your head. And so, so I don't think you ever really graduate from the school of hard knocks. Okay. Uh, if, if, if you do, then I'm, I'm working toward my PhD. There it uh, is. Because I don't learn anything the easy way. I wish I, wish I was one of those who... You know, it's like, hey, I watched so and so, and boy, that didn't work out so well. There are very few, there are a few, but only a few things that I've learned by watching other people do it. And I've realized, hey, that probably won't work. I probably should go a different way. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all too often, and, and this is this is kind of childish thinking, but we think, well, hey, I can do that, but I can make it work, you know. Yeah. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is it just isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, so, yeah. So I think I'm working towards my Ph.D. OK. And uh, yeah, for sure. I'm past the master's level. Well, would you mind sharing uh, maybe one area that a uh, lesson that you've learned that because I'll tell you now already people listen to you talk. All of us are probably saying, yes, I have knots on my head, too, from these hard knocks. Yeah. And so so we're with you there. Um, would you mind just sharing uh, a life oh, lesson that no, you've learned? I'm happy to do that. And, and I think, honestly, um, you know, just in our interaction, I think this is one that you'll actually relate to really well. I think people who are in leadership positions, I think this is something that we're very prone to. And, uh, and, and honestly, this has probably been, it probably was one of the hardest times in my life. And, and it just so happened that uh, Pastor Britt and Teresa were here for that time. Uh, it had nothing to do with them other than they were supportive. Okay. All right. So, hey, Pastor uh, Brent, all's clear yeah, with right. you. Yeah, He's right. good. He's good. 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 Yeah. So he, I got his back. Yeah. Right? And so, so, but with that, um, it was during that time and, and Pastor Brent was, and Teresa were right in the thick of that, is that we had outgrown our facility. Uh, when I got in there in 96, the thing that really started going crazy was, was youth ministry. Uh, we had some talented kids. We, we had a, a really good worship team. And it was one of those things where, where we'd get together and we'd be worshiping. And rather than doing a message or anything like that, the spirit would fall. And, and we, you know, and we just end up doing altar ministry and just great things were happening. And so literally kids were coming to Faith Bible Chapel and bringing their parents. Wow. And so, so we went from like 48 in this little place to like 100 20 130 we could we had to go to two services but we didn't have enough space for parking um you know we had been able uh you know to pay off that particular facility and so but we but there was nowhere we could expand and actually purchase ground so that we could have parking mm -hmm. and so people you know we'd fill up our parking lot and then they'd park other places well some of the places right next to us were businesses like uh a glass company who would get called out. And so they'd have to come get their vehicle. Well, it was blocked in by vehicles. Oh, wow. Coming to church. And so, so, you know, and, and it's a small people that haven't been to page Arizona. And, and I'm so glad that, you know, the Johnson family's there. We are a long ways from anything mm -hmm. other than Lake Powell. Uh, and so we don't have feeder communities. We're just this little bitty community of about 8,000 in the middle of, of nowhere, literally in the, you know, 
I'm actually glad you're putting that into context because sometimes we think of churches when you just said we're 45 and we, we grew to over 100, which now you're well over 200. A lot of times in the American culture, we think, oh, a mega church is at 2,000, you know, 5,000, yeah. whatever it might be. Well, you're surrounded by uh, Native American reserves. And then you have yep. this small community of 8,000. So a church of 200 plus would be considered the mega church of that area. So I'm, I'm actually really glad you kind of put that into context because um, everybody in that community knows you and it is because of the influence and the growth that you have had. It's been incredible. Um, I, I did the math one time and we had a, you know, a, when we have a really full service, close to 5% of pages in Faith Bible Chapel at that time. Yeah, any church so, in America. Um, yeah, so, so it's really kind of cool. Uh, and, and it's been really exciting. And, and the truth of the matter is, is I'm a small town guy. I love small town life. Um, and so, so this was like a dream come true. And part of the vision here was why can't a small community have a church with big church, uh, you know, small town, big ministry kind of thing to where, where all the quality, which, you know, and, and, and I found this with your folks there, uh, you know, small town people are great people. Mm -hmm. and, and they're honest folks and, uh, and caring folks. And, and I mean, I found that right there in your town, you know? And, and so, so it just always wanted a, a you know, a, a big ministry in a small town setting. And, and um, so we got and here the and influx of kids that were coming all the time. You've outgrown your facility. It was paid for. Yeah. What ended up happening? So I needed a youth guy. Yeah. Cause the kids that was going so well that I needed a youth guy. And, and so we, got looking and God divinely set us up to uh, there's one guy that was supposed to come, but he, he wasn't available. And, uh, and honestly, uh, thank God because uh, so, but somebody he recommended was Brent and he had just married Teresa. And so, and, uh, and so, I mean, they were young and, um, and so they came out, you know, and, and hadn't been married long. And, um, and so, he, you know, he took over the youth ministry to allow me to get, you know, stay focused. And I've always been part of our worship team. And Teresa was a key part of the worship team when she was here. And um, so, so we just started growing and we just couldn't fit in the place we were in anymore. And so, and we just couldn't, we couldn't expand. We couldn't buy adjoining land or anything. So we had to find a new place and literally had a school superintendent because the school owned different little slots of land uh, that, literally some place would freeze over before we'd be able to get a hold of any of that land. Hmm. And so, and, and he wasn't being hostile. It just, it was the nature of the politics of the time. He wasn't, he wasn't anti church or anything. I don't want to give that impression. Um, but it, it was just, point, the it is just the facts. It's here's what yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and I was looking with a, a brother pastor from an independent Baptist church. We'd actually served together in the national guard in air in, and um, in New Mexico and, literally moved here within a week of each other, didn't even know the other was moving here, literally ran into each other at a church camp setting, and it was just hysterical. So, so we were looking together, um, and, and uh, within a, about 18 months from that time, we had purchased five acres wow. from, from the school. Wow. And uh, just things had changed, and God opened doors. But in that meantime, we were kind of a tabernacle church. We had... Uh, we were setting up in the local uh, civil arts building and, uh, uh, and, and we're doing, doing services there, but we had to set up and tear down every Sunday. And, and what happens with those things is you got a great crew when you start, and then you got a faithful four, five, six people that do it every Sunday. Sure. So, so it was time to get to a place. We literally took over a Masonic Lodge. There you go. There's the kingdom. We took, over, we, we took over a Masonic Lodge. Uh, the, and, and it was amazing as one of those things where we literally we're praying in the center of our, our little town. And I looked over there and the Holy Spirit said, you need to talk to those folks because the building was empty. Wow. Called a, one of the head people for the Masonic Lodge in Arizona. He was a deacon at the local Baptist church, uh, gave us super favorable odds, wanted to sell it to us, but it had a low ceiling and we're a music, very musical church. So we ended up there for a year and a half and we were doing well there, but we, again, just no room. And, uh, but in that time we, we found our property, we paid for our property. 
Uh, we sold our original property at a very, um, and we, we made out very well with that. Mm -hmm. And so, so we had um, close to, we had our property, which out here, as opposed to there, property here is way more expensive. Uh, materials here are crazy way more expensive. You know, I mean, what would be a uh, $150,000 place where you live would be like a $350,000 place out west here. Wow. I don't know why that is. It's insane. Yeah. So, but, so we'd had, so we were fundraising and because we had the vision, you know, to build a, a nicer, bigger church. And, um, and so we had like half a million after we paid off our five acres that we were building Hey, Manny, I, I got to jump in. So if you're just now tuning in, watching us on Sunday morning, this is Pastor Manny Parks, Page, Arizona. And he's supposed to be telling us about his school of hard knocks. So far, uh, he was told he wasn't going to have favor with the school district, but he did. He got five acres of land that you got paid for. You had favor with the Masonic Lodge, she eventually moved in there. And now you have hundreds of thousand dollars in the bank. I apologize. I don't know what your definition of school of hard knocks is, <laughs> but so far, this is, I mean, you've had an influx of youth. Um, at this point, I'm thinking I, I've been going to the wrong school this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, the best part to understand, truly understand scripture, you got to get the context. Absolutely. Okay. And so all, yeah. all this is setting up and, 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 and that's where I was telling you how everything is so crazy expensive. And so we get everybody together and, and we dream and, 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 and come up with a vision for where, where we should go as a church and, uh, and have great people that, that put it all together, synthesize it, uh, go out, find a blueprint. And so then we get the blueprint, which is from somewhere like Missouri, uh, you know, and of course, you know, building a place that size in Missouri is one thing, but building a place like that here is a whole different animal. Sure. You know? And so I, and, and like when gas tanked out, you know, and it was like a dollar 25 and, and even a dollar places here, we never saw anything lower than two twenty five. No kidding. Per gallon. Yeah. So I'm saying that to lead you into, uh, you know, the whole building with everything we wanted with the land paid for just the building. Uh, when we talked to our contractor um, and that's with us doing a lot, doing a lot of the work because we have, skilled people in the congregation came back to four million dollars wow four million dollars uh one of my my leaders just he, he his jaw dropped and he looked around and he said we can't do this and uh and you know we had we had been fundraising so we'd fundraised somewhere around two hundred and twenty thousand dollars we had two hundred and forty you know, put away. And, and, uh, so, so we're just like, holy smokes. And, and, you know, $4 million is staggering. And so, so, you know, everybody was ready to hang it up there. And, and, and part of, part of my struggle is I am so afraid of letting people down. Okay. So, and, and, and one thing that to me was unthinkable is we have collected money for people there is no way I'm going to go tell them, oops, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so it's one of those things. And, and I don't know for you, but when I hear something like that and, and it's like unthinkable and, and kind of that, that, that two by four upside the head that you're not expecting, mm -hmm. I just kind of went cold and you get this cold ice pit in your stomach yep. and your brain goes numb. And I looked around at the guys and I said, no, what we're going to do is we're going to scale it back. And, and we had huge vision. So, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere on a town of 8,000. We, we, we had huge visions and, you know, balcony, I mean, all this stuff. And, uh, and so it's like, we need to cut this down, we, you know, and, and you deal with your dollar per square foot, you know, and what can we do at a, do, you know, at, at a hundred and, and, you know, $60 per square foot. Now this was, you know, 12, 15 years ago. Yeah. It was like that much a square foot. And to and us so, here in the middle, that, that's still a hefty dollar per square foot. Yeah. So, so, and this was back, back 11 years ago or 12 years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, so we take it down to one level. As a matter of fact, uh, our stage is kind of high and that's because we forgot to lower the stage when we took the balcony down. Uh, but we, we, we got it smaller. Now, this is the thing is after we cut it all down, it was still 14,000 square feet. 
No kidding. And so, no kidding. And so, you know, we're working with the contractor. And, and, and here's the whole thing is literally my, my guts basically melted when I heard that number. Uh, I was going to bed at night staring at the ceiling, my mind going a million miles an hour. And, and for any of you who do that, um, please send me a letter if that's ever done you any good because it's never done me a lick of good ever. Good, good, good word there. So um, it just has never worked. I've never come up with anything while my mind has been spinning a million miles an hour at night. It just doesn't work. And so, Actually, I'm pretty, uh, sure, I'm pretty sure the scriptures say that if you worry, can you add one moment to your life? Uh, that yes. That comes from us out of Psalms. Somebody you, famous said that. I'm pretty famous. I'm pretty sure it's pretty famous, it's yeah. big also. So yeah, uh, scriptures are very, or Proverbs, excuse me, very, very specific on the the lack of fruit that you will see oh. in practicing or having the discipline of worry. And truth be told, yeah. worry is the opposite of, or it is the faith, but it's faith in the wrong thing. So yeah. if, if you have faith, in, yep, yep, you, you have more faith in failure than you do your God yeah. when you practice worry. So yeah, so you're yes. in bed at night, mind is racing. What are you going to do? Mind now? is racing. It, it was crazy and so funny because I'm so so thrilled about the victory side of it that I forget that the point is the hard knocks. But um, but the truth of the matter was is that I was literally sick um, for like weeks at a time and and I'd get over it for a little while. But you know we kept going because building comes in stages, and and we still we have no idea how we're going to pay for this. Mm -hmm. And so by time by time we cut it back and and everything we're still. <clears throat> looking at something over two million mm -hmm. but we live real close to an electric plant and uh and i got some amazing people uh most of them happen to be native and uh because the, the plant is a is a uh, native preference plant most of them are electricians so we so they framed it out we started pulling the wire we pulled every bit of wire in that church we we set up every electrical box i was part of that uh, they literally took all of their vacation and spent it building that church. Wow. They bent all the conduit. Um, and, and one of the head guys there um, who didn't happen to be native, but he, uh, he oversaw it. He, he was a contractor at one time. So he connected with the contractor. Uh, one of the key guys for the contractor that poured the concrete ended up marrying um, and uh, becoming a faithful member of our church, married one of the gals from our church. Wow. Um, and they have four boys now and they're doing excellent down at Scottsdale Bible down in Scottsdale, Arizona now. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but the thing was, is that I did not know how this was going to happen. And mathematically it did not compute. There was no way mathematically. And so, but we started pulling all that. We had a crew that did clean up. So when they were done doing construction, we came in, we cleaned it all out. Sure. Um, you know, and so, so we had painters who came and then we went and, and one of our elders was part of the local hardware store who got us paint at cost. Um, one guy's daughter was a designer. She designed all the paint and, and colors and tile and all of that. Um, the hardware store favored us with everything at cost. And so, so materials now has been knocked down. We're providing labor. We saved well over $100,000 in labor. Wow. Uh, just with the, with pulling wire um, and doing all the electrical. Um, we have an electrical engineer in our congregation. He engineered everything out. We set up the great big box in the back that covered our electrical. Um, you know, so, so, you know, we had skilled people who came who knew how to use tools and we were doing a lot of this stuff ourselves. Mm -hmm. When the general contractor came through, he went and he would put a, a polarity tester in each of the outlets to make sure they're right only found one box that that wasn't right he said no, professionals don't do that well wow yeah it, it was incredible yeah and uh, and, and I'm, I'm taking it to the end but then I'm going to come around to to what I learned okay and where the problem was okay um and so so you know when we uh when we were done uh you know, what we thought initially is, okay, we're going to have the sanctuary set up with the sound system. It was, it was engineered sound for our, our sanctuary so that sound would be good. You know, we had the, the uh, baffles and everything and, 
And so it's like, we'll set that up. And then the educational side, the fellowship hall side, we just won't finish that. We'll, that way we're in, we're meeting, we'll raise money, we'll slowly build the rest. Sure. Uh, I don't even know how this happened, but we got both sides done. Really? When we stepped in there, now we didn't have doors. The doors were going to be like 12, uh, like somewhere around $2,800, if I remember right. But we didn't have the doors. Um, but somehow money just kept stretching. Things start, kept happening. And we didn't get any big sums of money come in in addition to what we'd raised or anything. I, I literally cannot tell you how it happened. Yeah. Um, but we were able to finish out the other side. We put out word. The only thing we don't have is doors, but God has been real faithful. Uh, somebody stepped up and bought the doors. Wow. But That's somebody cool. in the congregation bought the door. I don't even know who. Um, somebody else bought the computer that ran our, our system, you know, for, for the video stuff. Um, and so we ended up with the money we raised, the work we did, we ended up borrowing $840,000. And this was before the big economic crash. I think that was in 08. Yeah. But so at that time before the crash, it was valued at somewhere around two and a quarter million dollars. Wow. And I mean, it just raised, here, here's basic math. I mean, if you're at 14,000 square feet, you should at least be at $1.4 million for $100 a square foot. I mean, you, you should have yeah. easily broke a million dollars, but you're saying numbers like 160, 165 per square feet. You're, you're in the two plus million dollar range is what you should have debt wise and so the miracle alone of under a million you're right that is a miracle yeah that's the main so, and I, we've been in there 11 oh it's incredible and so so we're in there and um we've been in there 11 or 12 years and we're down to somewhere around 330 that we owe on it now amazing and so so part of part of my my goal is is I've been there 24 years and my intent is when it's time to hand it over to the next leader that God, God raises up, that it's debt free. That's a beautiful goal. So, so and, and it's the only debt we have. So take us back around then. In that amazing okay. process that here's saying, it, it's easy to look over your shoulder and see God's hand at work, right? Yeah. Um, but when you're in the middle of it, it was the old phrase, you lose sight of the forest or lose sight of the trees through the forest. So what yeah. would you say, what did God show you? What, what was revealed to you in that? Well, and he, here's what I found out is, is God gives us a vision. And, and, and I don't know what your vision is, you know, for different people, the, for you folks watching. Um, you know, it, it might not be a church. It could be anything. But God gives you a vision and he says, okay, here it is. And then we take the vision and it's like, it's like we're on the, the – 20 yard line and we get the handoff and we of course start running for the goalpost mm -hmm. as fast as we can. Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, the problem is, is number one, there's another team out there. Uh, but number two is that, that somehow number one, our walk with God is not football. Mm -hmm. And number two, it is not up to us to get the ball past the other goalpost. God gave me a vision and that's awesome. But the problem was, is I thought it was up to me to get it done. Mm -hmm. And so the resources that I was relying on was me. And the source I was looking to, to complete the project was me. Wow. And so I had to come up with a plan. I had to come up with an idea and I got exactly zero. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so I had no idea how this was going to be done. I just know God said to do it. And I really thought it was up to me. And consequently, I was carrying the load. And somehow, in spite of me, God rose up and he met each step. We, we poured our footer. Uh, one of the cool things we did is we got Bibles. We put them in, in weatherproof uh, settings. And then we went under the four corners of where the church uh, footer was going to be laid. We dug down deeper. We put down the word of God, put a layer over it, and then the footer was poured over it because we wanted our church built on the word of God. Wow. Okay. And so, so but every step we were able to meet, um, and, and if you've ever tried to get financing for a church and building a church, you know that nobody wants to finance a church. Mm -hmm. and, and consequently, you tend to get higher rates, but we finally found a financier. And, uh, and so we, but every step of the way, it was impossible but 
you know, we had the building part, the steel building part paid for, that was up. We went to work. We did not know how we were going to get in that building. And every step of the way, God just kept meeting us in ways I don't even know how. And, uh, and we finally got financing. And uh, I think we could have got 900,000 max, but we were working with our contractor and um, who is a good friend of ours now through the process mm -hmm. and uh, ended up, um, you know, only needing 840 to get it finished. Wow. And, uh, and again, we didn't think it would be entirely finished, but somehow things kept stretching, kept stretching. It's like the children of Israel in the wilderness, their, their sandals didn't wear out and, and their clothes didn't get holes in them. And here we were, we had the money we had. And for some reason it was stretching way past the math. Yeah. Now, I, I, and, um, Pastor Manning, I love that you just brought up the children of Israel in the wilderness with their sandals. Because the whole time you were talking just then, I started thinking about um, when it comes to uh, Moses. Moses met God yeah. at, at a furnace or, or a burning bush. And of course, God says to Moses, I need you to go do this. So he gave him a vision. But where Moses yeah. was getting hung up was the provision, right? And so he yeah. uh, yeah. said, listen, I just need you to go to Pharaoh. And he goes, well, at least here, throw your staff down. Like sometimes God throws us a bone, like <laughs> selling, you know, being able to pay off your old building, youth coming in, paying off new land. Like he gives us enough, if I can say it this way, to be honest, to sucker us into the journey. Right. But then there's, oh. a day, <laughs> yeah. there's a day that we're now standing in front of Pharaoh and man, you're at plague number three, four, yeah. five. And then you have this whole group following, like you said, this whole group following you into this promised land of a new building. And you go, yeah. oh, man, I don't have water for them to drink. I don't have I don't yeah. have boats to cross this Red Sea. I don't have food for them to eat. But yet, if you take those steps, that's where the provision starts coming in. And now you have this amazing testimony, either A, recorded by Moses uh, for us, or B, Page, Arizona, where look yeah. what happens when we follow the vision. It, it, it's incredible because, you know, of course, and I think deep down, my biggest thing was, is, you know, uh, you know, the scripture about, about, you know, who starts to build a, a tower without knowing what it's going to take to complete it. Mm -hmm. But in fact, that's what we were doing. Like, I don't know how we're going to get what well, we need to complete it, but we better do it. You know, we got to do it. And, uh, and I was so, so afraid of basically of uh, being a spectacle in this small town sure. that, you know, of how can we, uh, that we started and we couldn't finish just like scripture says, you know, and, and so that was tough. And, uh, but, you know, thank God that, uh, you know, he is faithful even when we are faithless. That's great. And, and um, you know, and so, you know, is that a hard knock? I think so. It's kind of embarrassing as a lead pastor to say that. That's where I was at. I and and uh, the, the part of that is, is that he's, God is faithful when we're faithless. And here's why. Because he can't deny himself. Mm. And so basically the nature of God, he will never compromise his nature for anyone or for any reason. Fortunately, I benefited tremendously from that because I was faithless um, and wasted so much time and worry and fret and, and taking so much on myself because I, I you know, I did not, my, my fear was that I would be basically, I would discredit the gospel and discredit myself and all of that, and, and which was totally wrong because it's not about me, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it never happens to you, but you know, sometimes leaders, we kind of somehow, we just kind of feel caught up in all that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so it's just so crazy. And, and, but God was faithful. And, and it's funny because you hear different, different people that have done huge things like Tommy Barnett and are like, you know, uh, don't be afraid of huge vision because when, when it's God in the vision, he provides. And, and before all of this, I was like, yeah, okay. How'd you do it? You know? And, and now afterwards it's like, he doesn't know how, how God did it. God just did it. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's been the, such the common story. That's what's crazy. That is the common story. Uh, let, let's go through the word of God in so many different times. How did God do it? How do you, there, there isn't a formula because if, no. if it is a formula, now God works for us versus us working for God. And so could you do me a favor in the last just two minutes that we have here together, uh, could you just, for those that are listening right now, that feel like there's something inside of them, 
that they're supposed to step out and do. Um, and that could be everything. And I just talking to you, that could be from starting a new business, going back to school, asking that girl or boy uh, if they want to go out on a first date, starting your family, getting educated, whatever it might be, they're getting into the ministry. I mean, the, the list is uh, incredibly long. But for those that are ready to step out, if you had two minutes with them just to encourage them, just to speak truth into their life, what would you say to them? Uh, well, first and foremost is, you know, is this God leading me? Yeah. Once that's settled, it's all settled. That's so if I know that this is God vision versus uh, like, you know, sure, Faith Bible Chapel is 2,000 people. Awesome. Well, doesn't that make me look great? Well, mm -hmm. that's a me vision. Mm -hmm. However, you know, is Faith Bible Chapel fulfilling the purpose God has for, me, for us? Then that's a God vision. Yeah. And so, so number one, is it a God led vision as opposed to a, uh, I want this for me. Uh, that's step one. Once that's decided, then take the step God is calling you to take and then relax and wait. Wow. Uh, a, a young man, when I was about 24, told me this, he said, whenever you get to a crossroads, he led bridges for peace. He was like 32 years old. I was like 26. And, and he said, whenever we get to a crossroads and we don't know which way to go, we sit down and wait for God to show us. Wow. Patience isn't my strong point, but that resonates. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so, so would know, I'm a, I want to, in just a moment, I'm going to tell everyone who's listening uh, about the greatest journey that you could ever take, and that's a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, but as we close down this portion right here, Pastor Manny, Thank you for your investment in my life. Uh, the Navigation Church is blessed because of your investment in uh, someone by the name of Pastor Brent and Teresa Johnson. But then also just thank you for all that you do for Navigation Church that many people don't know of. And a huge thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time to invest in us this Sunday morning. You guys are the most exciting investment I can think of. So it's fun watching what God's doing with you guys. I, I, I look and take ideas from you. So. Well, that's very humbling. So thank you for being here with us today. And now I'm just going to take a moment to tell you about the greatest journey that you can go on. Amen. God bless you guys. I know that I just mentioned this, but I want to say it again. Thank you, Pastor Manny, for investing in us and as a church. Um, what a rich, here's what I think I love most about Pastor Manny. Doesn't he seem like the guy that you can go sit, ha sit and have a cup of coffee with tomorrow? Uh, his, his, uh, his pastoral care and the ministry and just telling a story, you just get sucked into it. And what a story that he shared. You know, there's a lot of highlights, 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 but when you're in the middle of it, tell me it doesn't seem like all your lights seem really dim. If you're in the middle of any of those dimmed places right now, I just want to encourage you, re-watch this thing. Watch this story with an open heart to be encouraged that you should step out into what God has for you. And contrasting that to the life of Moses, get into Genesis. It's at the end of Genesis here in the beginning of Exodus. Get into the story of Moses. And don't just read it like, oh, I know this story. Put yourself in Moses' shoes. Stop. Actually, let's do this. Let's stop and ask those questions of why am I feeling this way and how would Moses be thinking and what would he be facing going against the most powerful man in the world? And I bet you what Moses was going through is going to parallel what you are going through. And if you can see that Moses got to the other side, if you can see that Pastor Manny got to the other side, and I will say this, I have got to the other side in so many places in my life. I bet it will encourage you to get to the other side. But all of us have one thing in common. We get to the other side because of the voice that we're listening to. Who are we listening to? We're listening to God. We're listening to Jesus. We're listening to that Holy Spirit living inside of us. And all of this is possible because there was a time in our life that we said yes to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to just take two minutes right here to let you know that there is a God who created heaven and earth. And when I say that you're separated from him by a thing called sin. What is sin? What do you mean? It's when you know you're wrong. 
It's when you have that pit in your stomach, you say those words, you make that action, and you immediately regret it. How in the world were you taught to regret that? That's because we've been woven inside of our DNA. There's something known as morality. And when we infringe against those natural laws that have been built in the world around us by a loving God, it's called sin. And that sin has separated us from a close and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. But on this day, you can once again be close to God. And guess what? You're going to sin again. You're going to mess up again. But God doesn't leave you, nor does he forsake you. Actually, he pulls you close in order to love you more. And if you would like to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, all you have to do is simply believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. What do you believe in your heart? You're believing that there was a man named Jesus who died on a cross for your sins. But three days later, this is what Easter is. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But then confess with your mouth. What does that mean? I'm going to say it this way. Say this prayer after me. Repeat these words. Say, Dear Jesus, today... I recognize that there is sin in my life and I no longer want that sin to separate me from you. But I want to start a journey with you. I don't know where this journey ends, but I know that I will go where you call me. Forgive me of my sins. Become Lord of my life, and from this day forward, I call you Lord. God, I thank you for every person that has said that prayer. I thank you for every person that maybe have said it in the past, but they have moved away from you. Today, they move close again. I thank you for every individual that said that prayer 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, that just even saying it again in their head with me, revive something inside of them that there's a burning bush calling them to a journey. And now, God, I pray for every person that said that prayer for the very first time. Not only do we celebrate with them, God, we welcome them into the family known as your sons and daughters. God, bless them this day. Holy Spirit, invade their lives. Become personal, intimate with them, and become the comforter that they've so desperately needed. And I say all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, I celebrate with you right now. I'm as excited now as I was even starting this broadcast because I believe there's those out there that have made that decision for the first time ever. So what do you do now? Well, on some of our platforms, you're going to see a tab pop up. Make sure to click yes there that you receive Jesus. That way we can communicate. Uh, In other platforms, our moderators are going to throw up a line right now that if you said that prayer for the first time, just hit the like button and we'll make sure to follow up with you. But above all things, could you do me a favor? I need this from you. Could you just send us a note on any one of our social media platforms? We're checking them all. Send us a a message. You can even email the church uh, at church.office at navchurch.org. And we would love to be able to connect with you and celebrate this huge step that you've taken, which by the way, it starts a journey, a lifelong journey as you help, as you follow Jesus Christ. But as Navigation Church, here's what I'm going to commit to you that we're going to be here to help you take your next step in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless, and we will see you next week.